Phil Caponegro. Karina McKeever. Here. Frank Carbone. Teresa Cinciato. Yeah. Okay. Stephen Scheffler. Here. Joel Goldstein. Katie Horowitz. Here. Katie Denny Horowitz. Well, it's, I just have a D in there on my roll call sheet. You know. um, T. Willis Elkins. Here. Abraham Leibovitz. Sante Michelli. Here. Mario Domerick. I'm here. Janice Peterson. Roger Capucci. Here. Okay. Keith Berger. Emma Raymond. Okay. Here. Okay. And Simon Weiser is in, he's on the call. Okay, you were fine. You have a call. Okay. I'm also here, Bella Sable. Bella Sable. Be Be Bella, you're not part of the committee. Oh, okay. Sorry. But it's nice to have you here. Okay. Um, let's see, Mark, do you want to get started? The first item on the agenda is Mark from Diva. I know that you wanted to share your screen. Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Mark. Thank you. Um, the owner of one ten. Wait, okay. Simon needs to mute, or someone needs to mute. I think it is Simon. Yeah. We can't hear you. Wait, wait, wait. Simon, can you mute your your mic? He is muted. Okay. 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 Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Nagwitzki. I'm the owner of uh, Wanton Kent and uh, Bida Williamsburg. Um, I'm in this neighborhood for over 45 years uh, and physically in the 79 uh, in the Wanton building. Uh, I'm the owner and I'm the neighbor of uh, Marsha P. Johnson uh, State Park. Um, I'm going to ask you as a community uh, for letter of support for uh, my uh, backyard, uh, which I used to have, uh, I used to rent from a uh, state park and I lost it a uh, mm -hmm. couple of months ago. And uh, I'm going to ask my friend uh, Ryan Kunan to present you as a short history of, of, of my location. Ryan. Okay. okay, we we've prepared a slideshow to sort of go through the history and give people stuff quick fast, but I have never shared from my Mac here. So I don't know. I think now we have to try and share the slideshow. Yeah, who's doing who's doing the presentation? Is it it's me and Mark have shared. Mark doesn't have a computer with WebEx, so he's using mine. Well, let me laptop. see if I can if you you don't have any controls. Right now? See? Yeah. Um, I have share. So I have to know yeah. who's okay. So I see you here. All right. So let me get my screen. Let okay. Me... I, I I passed the presenter privileges okay. to you. You're both uh, you're both listed on the same. Yes. Okay. We're in... Yeah. Hang on and let me pull it up. Sorry, on my screen. Sorry, give me five seconds. I want to go to screen. Oh, here, hang on. Where is, sorry guys. Take your time. I have too many things on my desktop. Hang on one sec. Uh, 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 uh. No, I can't see this. Shoots. Hang on. Should be full screen wide. 
Oops. Okay, here we go. Hang on, here we go. Can you see it? Nope. All right. I can see it. I see it. Okay. <laughs> I can see it. All right. So we're going to start. If you can't see it, well, hopefully everyone oh, can see it. Okay. okay. All right. So um, we decided to do this quick little history because a lot of people get confused about this building. Um, a lot of people think it's a parks building. A lot of people don't everything. So we're going to start just quick because it has zoning, et cetera, et cetera. So this building was built in 1865. It was one of the first plastic factories in the building and it made dental rubber. This is a little ad. Um, all right. Is it showing you the next slide? It's hard for me to really tell here. No, no. No. Okay. Hang on. I'm. Is it showing you the slides? We see the dental rubber. Okay. So how do I get it to the next slide? Cause on mine. Ah. Now, yep. see, mine shows it switching slides. Uh, Do you have a toolbar on the on the left side? It has a number between brackets. Maybe that's your control. I have no control from here once I gave it to you. Yeah, no, it's on mine. It's it's. I see the presentation and I see us as moving through the different slides. Hang mm -hmm. on, let me see if. We still have Hercules and the lion. Yeah. Maybe your share screen is not the the screen that you're looking at. Yeah, I know. That's I'm trying to see what is because right here, where's the WebEx? Oh, okay. Aha. All right. Capiche. Let's go. All right. Hang on. Sorry, my friends. I want to know if they get the dental rubber on the lion. <laughs> oh, right? Suspense. Okay, well, all right. Um, hang on. Katie or Steve, can anyone who knows more about this? I, I can I can offer no help, but can anyone else help? Does it not work sometimes if you're in presentation mode and you have to be like instead of it being full screen or presentation mode, Ryan, you need to go slide by slide? Or just yeah. scroll down, like share your screen. Yeah, that's like, so I don't know why it's sharing just this one slide and not the whole presentation. Because on my thing, hang on. Uh, no, let's see. I if it if it's full screen on your computer, then that sometimes that doesn't work. Yeah, okay. we're not in full screen because I now I can see my. All right, let's see. Hang on. Oh, something changed. Okay. We're, we're, we're moving. Oh. Okay. All right. Back to start. All right. Cool. So, haha. Um, this building was built in 1865, one of the first plastic buildings. Um, there are, again, some cute little historical things that from Brooklyn History Society, but it shows this building's been around. This is the building. And people don't quite realize, um, you know, it was a factory. A uh, famous factory for its plastic. So here is from 1920. The building is over in the far left hand corner, but again, just shows you for those of people who've forgotten what like industrial working Williamsburg looked like. This is the tax photo from 1940. So again, this building has been standing here forever. No park around, no state land, regular neighbors, regular street, whole lot of stuff. The park is like a new entity. So how does Mark figure in? This is Mark when he immigrated to Williamsburg in 1979. Um, 76. 76, but this picture is from around 79. What some people may not realize is that Mark is one of the first loft tenants because he moved into the top floor of 110 Kent in 79. He paid $50 a month for the whole floor, plus he was a superintendent for the building. By 1981, he was the prime lacy with he was a rent to own and he was paying monthly rent to own this building. He became the full 
the owner in full by year 2000, but he was in charge of this building from 1979 on onward. And everyone knows that the 70s and 80s were a different world than they are now. This is the 1980 tax lot picture. So again, this is this is the building right when Mark moved in. This is a picture, it's harder to see, but this is the platforms in 1988. You can see this is behind Mark's building, what our historical platforms looks, look like. And you can see why the neighborhood was screaming to have a park on the waterfront and not an industrial wasteland. Mark was at the forefront of this fight from the beginning. These are some other historical pictures from an artist in the neighborhood, Phil Schreck. This is standing in Mark's building, looking left and looking right. So again, just to give you a picture of what this looked like when the state and city had abandoned Williamsburg and no one was around, but people, residents like Mark, who were saying this neighborhood deserves park space on the waterfront, deserves a different thing than being abandoned. Um, NAG. Is one of the people is the group that fought to build the park. They're the group that specifically said this waste transfer site is wrong. It should be a park. They were the mark gave them office space. They were the first um, office tenant in Mark's building, which moved transitioned from a a loft building into an office building at the request of the community. Because if if Mark had had his his wish, um, it would have been a luxury loft building, a luxury house building, but it wasn't and it's an office building. So here again, just to remind people that the state did not give this neighborhood anything. The neighborhood fought for a park, demanded a park, and gave the park a manage for us. But this was a, a community action. And this is just one of the, you know, the Governor Pataki is the one who eventually signed in. There was whole stuff between NYU and all sorts of things. But New York State Parks and Mark they, they started operating in 2007. They were neighbors um, for individual events from 20, 2007 to 2012. There were individual permits for every event. And it's kind of hard to explain how the event thing works because it wasn't like Mark asked people to do events here. Oftentimes people would walk around and think that this was the parks building where they would say, oh, I want to do an event. Who do I talk to? And and if you if anyone remembers 2007, 2008, there wasn't a manager to be found. There was no office. There was no bathrooms. Like people would constantly be mocking, knocking on Mark's door. And so, oftentimes, event planners would come, and Mark would be the first contact because he would be the person on the street. But this was a private-owned business and a public space. So oftentimes, they were in collaboration together for music festivals where. The Biba inside would be the, the backstage for all sorts of things. They were the only bathrooms for years. From 2013 to 2015, there was a backyard rental agreement. Essentially, they had signed the lease that this 2,500 square foot would be rented from the state parks for the monthly rent to be the backyard for a restaurant. This was in a time when he was applying, eventually because of certificate of occupancy issues, there was not an, the SLA uh, permit timed out and Mark had to finish an elevator. And so this is where we switch from being a restaurant with just has a backyard to 2016 to 2019, there were yearly concession leases. Um, again, just remind, you know, there was lots of events, there used to be movies in the parks, but this is what the backyard looked like. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's fun. Again, it, it, it wasn't in contrast to anything that was happening with Schmorgasburg or anything else. Good times, good people on the waterfront. So what's happening now? In April, 2020, a lease was sent, but it was not executed due to the COVID shutdown. In July of 2020, the state informed Mark that Biba concession was being evicted. Um, they were told that they don't match the new park design. Mark tried to fight it because he spent $200,000 building this structure. Um, in the end, he had to remove it. And we we'll just say New York State Park still has the $10,000 deposit, even though there is no lease. Now, to give some sort of context to like, why uh, all sort of economic options need to be utilized, I want people to look at the property taxes that this building has paid. 
So in 2000, when he took over, it was 5,000 a year. 2020, it was 70,000 a year. It peaked in 2020 at 77,000. So the entire building has been empty because of COVID with only a $7,000 reduction. I wanna remind people of 421A, the luxury towers and the state park don't really pay property taxes. So if you look at this, in 2009, 20,000 a year, 2017, 44,000. Mark is one of the people in our neighborhood who has been paying property taxes on the waterfront while everyone else sort of gets exemptions. Meanwhile, his business has been completely shut down because it was a restaurant and an office building since COVID started. There's few tenants. The, the building now has one tenant out of five. So the office market has not fully come back. This is what the structure was. A lot of people like knew that there were seats and things, but this is the demolition of it coming down. So this is a whole structure that had been architecturally approved, designed, insisted on by, by the state that had to get ripped down because it didn't match. There was no like health or safety issue. And what do we have now? Well, we got lots of benches. that are oftentimes empty, except on Saturdays from April to November. They go right up to Mark. So this is where the backyard concession used to be. Again, lots of, of benches, 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 um, benches, benches, benches. So the timeline and the ask, I think Mark's gonna speak a little bit more to this, but essentially we'd like CB1 to write a letter of support for a lease from New York State Parks for the backyard space that is exactly like the lease was in 2013 to 2015, not asking for a concession, asking for a backyard lease. The timeline is to finish the elevator construction and get a certificate of occupancy. In April 22, open as an indoor coffee shop, private event space as the application is cycling through. Um, essentially why we're coming now for a letter of support is because as you see, you kind of have to start, you have to have all your information of what your bar restaurant is going to look like before you start the application process so we can't go to the sla unless like for backyard space unless there is a lease in negotiation in in process etc cetera, etc cetera. and um you know i guess mark mark is here to answer questions from people about what is going on with his space and let me take the presentation down So that, I don't know, here, now, how do I take it down? Ow, how do I take it down? Um, all right, now I don't know how to make it go back. We'll click the share button and it'll unshare. Share button. Uh, here. Oh, okay. Do you see a share button on the bottom toolbar? No, I don't have a bottom toolbar. I have like just the, oh, I have the window. But in the, you know, up at top in the WebEx menu, share the share. Ah, all right, WebEx menu. Or maybe it says unshare there. Um, um, Next to start video, close video. Yeah, that's not up anywhere. That's your video settings. Aha. Escape? <laughs> yeah, no, I know, right? Let's. Well, we can just leave this up right now. You guys can ask or. I, I can ask. A, I have a question. Yeah. First of all, thanks, you guys. For, thank you for also for all the historical pictures. And really, I mean, it's really interesting to see all that. And Mark, you've been here a lot, long, long time. Um, it was a micro, I guess I want to clarify what you're looking for is a backyard rental lease, which is what you had from 2013 to 2015, but which changed after 2015 because the change in the business and not having the CFO, right? So then you needed to switch to a concession. But what you'd like to do when you get your, because the restaurant is going to, once the elevator is up and running, the intention is to get. The CFO again and get the restaurant going again. So what makes sense for you is to go back to the rental rather than the concession. And so that's what that's what you're looking for is a lease similar to the 2013-2015 lease. Is that right? Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
that's what I would like to do. And, uh, uh, you know, we should be finished with the construction uh, around February, do, March. Do you guys want me to sign out real quick and sign back in so we just don't have the presentation up? That might be better because then we can see each other. Yeah, so I'll be right back. We'll be right back. Give us two seconds. Sorry. This is stupid. Oh, here we are. Oh my gosh. Marie, do you need to make her not a presenter anymore or something? Yes, maybe. It won't even let me leave. Uh, it won't let me leave. Shut down when I was restarting. But while you're still here, and what you're looking for is the 2,500 square feet, which was, oh, there they go. <laughs> when they come back, we can. Nope, they're still here. Can Marie make her no longer a presenter? Ah, there we are. I, I don't know where we're stuck on. Somebody must still have. I took the controls okay. away. All right, no, Ryan's back. back. There we're she back. is. Okay. okay. The, the, the last part of my question is just to, to confirm. So what you're looking for is the exact same footprint of what you have, which was 2,500 square feet in the back, and you would put the same cut, put the structure back up. That and does the structure keep? Is there a separation from the park itself when the structure is up? So the they wouldn't reconstruct the that whole big concession like the metal thing it would just literally be the the outline and and tables and chairs back there because that flowers must be yeah so there was always a barrier but uh, I, I would like to discuss this with uh, you know the, the, i mean uh, let's get it i mean this is uh, you know we should do it together is that Simon again oh. i'm on yeah mark yeah. tina Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. The, the same structures we, we, we had before, uh, I would uh, do only the perimeter with a lot of flowers, a lot of trees, uh, uh you know, the way it was, uh, redesigned and actually, uh, uh Leslie, uh, right. Uh, you know, told me uh, certain things to do and, uh, and talking about construction, my construction with. My construction should be finished around uh, February, March, after we're going to go for inspection. Of course, everything is uh, up to a COVID, uh, but the, if, if, if the, the building department is going to work on that. And once uh, we finish that part, uh, I would like to have the, uh, I'm going to go for liquor license uh, to apply uh, with the state uh, community. Okay. Does anyone else have questions? I, I have a question. Um, hold on, sorry, I'm trying to turn myself on here. Um, so what you're asking for is the lease, uh, which you had before. Yes. Um, how does this compare to what Smorgasburg had? They have a permitted use. Is oh, that not... different from a lease? Uh, it's different than at least, but uh, this I would like to Ryan to answer because she she's more familiar with this. I'm not into this more this more. It it's all standard uh, leases from Albany. Like if you look at, I mean, at the language, like we send it to Trina and Steve. The language of the concession lease and the other lease are basically the same, but it's standard boilerplate for us. Now, what happened with Smorgasburg is very is is very different, but it's a standard lease from from Albany. Okay, and this is something that's very typical to do for this type of space, yes? I don't know if there's another space that's typical like this. So I think that to say it's typical, is it the same, like, is it the same language? 
that's used in other concession leases. It seemed like it to us. We only have the opportunity of seeing what was sent to us, but we have a lease that we had from 2013 to 2015. And then we have examples of 2016, 2017, 2018. The biggest difference is 2013 to 2015. It was a lease for a backyard to a restaurant space. 2016, 2017, 2018, it was an all exterior concession stand. So the difference being is we want to go back to a lease for a backyard to a restaurant space. Again, I think I think what it is 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 this this building is a city building. It's a private building. So it is going to be a restaurant. The question here is will it have an outdoor space where they will control where people sit or will it be a restaurant that does takeout where people just go to the go wherever. So again, if Mark doesn't have a park, the restaurant still opens, the restaurant still serves, people will still take their food wherever they take their food. The idea is, will the model be based on a backyard, on an interior with a backyard, or will it be all interior with takeout? It's really the, the only options. But the idea is, is either the, the state leases and have a backyard or, or, or it doesn't. But it still is, it's not, um, I think a lot of people always think that the whole building is leased from, from the state or things like this. There's always confusion about what is leased and what isn't, if that makes sense. Yeah, I had a question, Ryan. So you talked about the SLA process. That is that is unchanged. Yeah. It's concession. I mean, you can get that SLA for your interior restaurant operations. Oh. And then there may there would probably be another one should it, there be an outdoor activity. So the way so when it was a concession stand. The liquor license that Biba had was the same liquor license that Smorgasburg has, which is seasonal summer liquor license, which runs from April until October. The restaurant license is different in that it is a year round and it, it goes over what spaces you have. So like the, the SLA has specific rules about what happens in backyard spaces. Um, you have to have full, you have to sit down and get, you know, service type type stuff. So this is. Like the difference is just that this would be a, a, a full liquor license for a backyard that gets renewed every two years versus a summer seasonal, which gets reviewed, you know, which is the summer seasonal. But again, this, this would still go through the whole process. I don't like uh, of the SLA. And another difference, if I understand it is, um. If it's a, con a separate concession agreement, as opposed to the backyard, the backyard can be an extension of the restaurant, same menu. But if it's a con separate concession, then you actually have to have a separate menu, a separate service, right? I guess so. The thing with Biba is they never ran an indoor and outdoor. It was always either it was outdoor. So the concession, like I mean, again, it's hard for me to say because like Schmorgisberg runs has a concession license type thing. I guess. It's, uh, I don't know the answer to the question versus it's just, it's still all SLA. It's just different types of licenses. Like there's a full restaurant, there's a beer and wine, there's summer seasonal, there's hotel, there's catering. Like there's all these different degrees. Like you choose what type of license. The restaurant license is the restaurant license. Ryan, I, I can answer that. Oh, I and Raphael is Mark's partner on the restaurant, so he's probably better suited to answering some of the technical SLA questions. Yeah. So, uh, again, like Ryan said, I'm, I'm Mark's partner, has been Mark's partner for the last five years in this community and seeing what he's gone through with this. And I've been there trying to help him out. Um, yeah, so if there is a concessions in the back, because the SLA, anytime you have two different bars, you need two different licenses, right? What he had before was a concessions that was serving the backyard with the CFO just on the backyard. It, it did not include the inside of the restaurant, even for sitting area or anything else like that. You can only, what he had before is come in, grab a beer and sit down in the park. You could use the bathroom, but technically you had to leave out the same entrance, right? So the, the park was open in the back and everybody had to go out in that direction. The same way they came in, the same way we went out. It was great for him because it was open during Smorgasburg. And something to note is that Mark was paying 5% of everything that he made to the park. 
right, to the state, whereas Smorgasburg didn't have to do that. So I think when I came in to partner with Mark almost five years ago now, and now we own multiple businesses together, I think all, all and, I, and I am indebted to him because of what he has helped me uh, do in this community and be integrated in this community. Um, and someone who has lived in this community for 20 years and, and watched what has happened. But I, I just think that the point is here is that Mark deserves this chance. He's been bleeding out of his business for the last year. Uh, we've been lucky enough to have a business across the street that can help support it. But that should not be the scenario here. This business should have been able to continue doing what it was doing to continue to make something of a profit to help to pay the egregious amount of bills that. I've never seen someone have to go through. Um, it, it seems like there's there's something like, you know, something crazy agenda against the building and Mark himself. So, you know, I think when we talked about coming to this meeting, this is not a fight. This is just proof. This is just history. This is someone who has helped to design a lot of the regulations and guidelines and worked with every single politician that I can imagine. Um, in this industry, you know, I, even our, our our next mayor, Eric Adams, and when he was working for our president and, and done nothing but been someone that's amicable to the situations in this neighborhood and the park and anything else that is needed. He is a go to personnel and I, I am indebted to him. And so are a lot of other people in this community. And it, I've gone to see him have fight in him to be just completely beaten down. And, and I think this is a last. You know, effort here, like, I think he deserves the chance. I think everyone some way on this call is has something to go back 6 degrees of separation back to Mark in some way, just from what I've seen in the last 5 years. So, you know, yes, going back to answer your question, it would be 2 different licenses. What we're trying to do is just go and have the indoor operations, something that's completely regulated and controlled on the inside and have a place for people to sit on the outside in the backyard. And enjoy the views of the park and that that's simply what it is. It doesn't need to be open to anyone coming in from the park. This would be the antithesis to the old program, which was allowing people to come in from smorgasburg from the backyard. Come in, grab a beer, grab, grab a hot dog or whatever it was, and then walk back out into the park. We would no longer want that. It would be completely in our shoulders to have a space indoors and just have it as a backyard. So, like many of my spaces that have backyards, it would be an inside liquor license. And the backyard is just an amenity to the building. Who owns the backyard? Because you need to see a vote and approval for that from the New York State Liquor Authority. Three, that's why we're here. It's New right. York State Park land. And okay, but I understand yeah. that, but I want to make it clear it's not something that we we would have come to us. Is that something? Why no, it w it would. We've gone to the SLA and spoken about this many times. And we've Multiple we've times. written the community board wrote letters. Uh, about Martha Marsha P. Johnson part two for advocacy. So I think it's relevant. Um, I have a question. Um, can you put this sort of in a comparison context of some sort between what Smorgasburg has? They have they pay what a minimal amount. They don't pay anything of their uh, percentage of their liquor sales, as I understand, uh, to the park. They Pay a very minimal amount. They get both slabs, uh, the use of both slabs, and one of those slabs is out of commission for any other events for the rest of the time because it's all filled with picnic tables, um, just as a description to say these things. Um, so that's what they get. Can you put that into what you're asking for? in comparison kind of like smorgasburg got this on a silver platter as far as i'm concerned that's opinion from the state i mean I, you I, I say, we, we don't want to fight with people or, or or down on smorgasburg i feel like there's a variety of opinions even within the partnership of whether smorgasburg is positive or negative as a whole to the community so i think that's a separate i will say that um Mark pays property taxes and he's been here fighting for this waterfront since 1979 and I feel like again it's it, the state never never wanted to buy this building if they did they never made an offer to Mark it's been a private building and 
when the 2005, when it was rezoned, it was kept commercial as in that it would be a restaurant, a hotel, a offices, that this was sort of where it was, was kept. It, at that time, the, the, the neighborhood went into deep negotiations to get Brodsky's land, to get all this. There was never that I saw, and maybe anyone could, like a, an activist push to say, let's, let's get the building. It's always been sort of, this is Mark's building. This is a private space, a restaurant event type thing. So again, I, the, um, yeah, I like, I don't know if that answers. It's different in that this is wants to be a restaurant that would activate the space every single day, rain or shine throughout the year, not just be here on Saturdays, April through November. So, I mean, this would be an everyday thing. Um, I mean, I will say, you know, COVID has been shut, COVID has shut down this building since, essentially since March of 2020, but Mark has still been doing community events. There was a free memorial for Peter Gillespie's wife. We had a dance project. It's always open for the Rosh Hashanah um, holidays, sharing with the Chabad house. This, even though Mark is struggling because of COVID, it's still open to the community. But it's it's a this is a private building versus a fairground thing that happens once a week. So it's sort of apples and oranges. They can coexist. They don't compete. I mean, they may like they don't comp they're not competition with each other. The, that's a tourist event once a week. This is, would be a restaurant in the neighborhood with Polish roots esque. Can I ask another question. Um, so, oh, well, I can ask a question after you. Me after you, Steve. Um, so, so the interior restaurant is is going to be opening in the near future, right? You have the timeline, so that's that's the timeline. And so, is the finance? And I understand you've been financially struggling, but is the financial model for the restaurant contingent on the outdoor space, or is it? is it can it still be successful no, uh, this, this is it will be a, a restaurant with it will be a restaurant with takeout like the park it you cannot remove this restaurant from it being in the middle of this park you cannot remove people coming in if it's a nice day wanting to go out and eat their food in the park so to be honest with everyone here it will either be a restaurant that has a backyard where people that come and want to eat go in the backyard or it'll be a restaurant where people take their takeout and go into the backyard so is do you want Mark to like it, the Mark and the restaurant to control that, or do we want not to like this? Is I don't I don't know how to be more like you can eat inside. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying well, of course, but I'm saying if it's a nice day, lots of people like to sit outside. So if it is a restaurant that only has indoor seating and there is no backyard, it will also have takeout, so people can take their food if they want. It's just like. I think that it's the the backyard is tw like smorgasburg would be here year round if it was year round viable to be outside. We all know like outside. It's they're not trying to put up a structure, a heated structure, anything. This is just going to be a backyard for when it's nice and people want to sit in the backyard could. It's the little part behind the entranceway. It's I mean if you come there it doesn't take away any of the things if it doesn't exist. I think it sucks for people, but I don't think it ends the business. Um, Steve? Yeah, and after, uh, Sante wants to ask also, and Paul Wilson has his hand raised. Um, yeah, so how much of the back part of the, the, the new slab would you, are you envisioning uh, using for? It's, it's the same that it always was. I don't know if people ever went and saw Biba, but what when was you, it? Yeah, what was 20, it? It's 2,500 square feet. When you walked, when you walk up the side, there's an entryway and it's all the stuff from behind the entryway to the front of his building. So it's sort of like just what's a, a fake natural backyard. Roughly what, how much of the slab will that take? Like, like one tenth, one like how big is this? Like what percentage of it is how big? How big is the slab? I don't know. We may have to ask Leslie Seven, for some math. Hundreds, uh, I mean, it's hundreds to the width. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a fifty-five by uh, forty-five. That's what you. So I don't know. Ten ten percent of the one slab. I'm not. I mean, I could if if I could answer that question tomorrow to the, in an email. I don't know the math off the top of my hand. All right, but less. Like less than half, probably less than a quarter. 
Yeah. Not, not even a quarter, less than a quarter, okay. for sure. Okay. And what, and, and what hours were you envisioning so having access to that? It, it always is with, with the park hours. So the, the backyard was always, if the park is closed, the, the backyard can't be open. All right, so it'd be open during, if Smorgasbord does continue, then it will be open during Smorgasbord. Yeah, I mean, it always, I, again, they're not in con conflict with each other. Right. Okay, thanks. Okay, Sante. Yes, thank you. Well, beyond the fact Mark can remember me, but I, I have personal connection with, actually with the land before it was a park, both in the 80s and also in the 90s. But we met many times, but you can't remember. I was definitely younger, Mark. So I can only be in support of you. The I'll be 70 years old next week. <laughs> the only things I, I, you know, would be probably helpful, um, definitely to me, but probably to the committee, is to have a kind of diagram, a plan, so people could see what it, what Smorgasburg has, what you had before, and how small is the space you have today, joints. Yeah. The, problem, the problem, to be honest with you, Santi, all of yes, and but we have all the pictures and diagrams before. But it, how do you say to spend? Yes, in the SLA application, all of that stuff will be included because it has to be. Having it now ahead of time is sort of again um, hard considering the economics. But, but yes, maybe Ryan, there can no, be. A lot. I mean, many of the. We we have it's the same application from 2013. We I could send everyone. The the there's the diagrams exactly how it was before. It's the same thing. So yes, I can send I can forward that to the committee. No, I say, but the, I mean, I understand the license is active or no, no, no. You... we we have the diagrams exactly from before. Sure, no, no. The other question is that you currently the the license is active or you are seeking oh. a renewal? No, no, no it, it's an it would be a new license application. Um, the why? why the old one is not active because anymore? It, because it was a seasonal, it was a seasonal one, and the the it wasn't renewed after after COVID in twenty twenty. Uh, well, you know what I, what I can say, you know, definitely uh, would be helpful we, uh, instead of staying here to look at this empirically, vaguely, you know. Uh, but you don't need to have a a, 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 a sign architectural drawings. Can be a simplified join many legal license. We give a simplified diagram. We have that and we will send it tomorrow. We have that and we'll send it tomorrow. We have it, we'll send it tomorrow. Okay, we'll put it with the committee report. And maybe other advice that could be helpful. Why don't you also um, bring these simultaneously to the SLA review committee? Because we're not ready to do an application, and the application has to have the backyard lease. So we have to get the backyard lease first from the state before we can even start the SLA application because they're the landlord of the backyard. So without that agreement, there is no back there. You can't even put it into the application. The application for SLA, like it's in there, will start in like February, will be before the SLA in February or March. And you'll be doing that regardless of whether or not you get the lease agreement because of what you said before that the restaurant is going to happen. Yeah, the re yeah, the restaurant will either it will it will either be just a restaurant, a, an SLA restaurant application, or it'll be a restaurant with backyard. Okay. Hey, Paul, you want to go? Yeah. Hi. I um just wanted to you know say to the committee members that I support this. Um, I remember a time when. Uh, police from time to time would find dead bodies out there. <laughs> so we've come a long way. Uh, and I'm a founder and the director of the Greenpoint Spartans Youth Football Organization. And uh, this year, because of COVID, we couldn't have our certification night at McCarran and uh, also the uh, Bushwick Inlet Park was unavailable. So Mark allowed us to have our event at his space free of charge. So I just wanted to say, you know, and this is completely unsolicited and thank you, Mark, uh, for that, whatever. It's just, I feel like, um, you know, uh, there are businesses in our community that serve our community and this is one of them. Thanks. Are there any um, committee, committee members or non-committee members that want to say anything before we 
try to come Katie, up with Katie Naptarski has another yeah, I have a question. Actually, it's oh, Mary or John Mark. Uh, okay. Ryan and Mark, uh, actually more Ryan. Um, are you still there? Yeah, we're here. Okay. So what exactly do we need to do to get this done and who should we contact? Is it the elected officials that we need letters of support from? Or so, would it be better to have community groups since this is a community based organization and business? Would it be better to get letters from certain community groups that are in the surrounding area? What is your suggestion for how, how to get this done? I think that's this is the start of doing all of that. Um, as far as we know, all the electeds are with us, Eric Adams, Lincoln Wrestler. We like this is I think we're we were coming here to the community board because we wanted to start this discussion now about will the community board also sort of come out in official support. But we're doing all of those things and a lot of that will like come together in the SLA committee meeting. I think if in February we showed up at SLA and we hadn't had this park discussion, SLA would be like, what does parks think? So we're trying to sort of get the discussions started now saying, hey, parks, this is what we're doing. What does parks think? So the SLA and the whole, like that conversation starts depending on what calendar we're put in February or March. And I think then we're gonna have, you know, the everyone, everyone lining up in support if that okay. makes sense so you're not ready for that step yet for getting letters and you we're, know we're, we're starting to gather them this is the starting but because it was like holidays and everything i think the full force campaign starts in january with all the you know with with lincoln and eric and all the new people in but also we're not planning on going before sla until february or march so we but we, because we wanted to get it in front of parks first, so parks had a chance to talk about it before SLA starts officially talking about it. Okay, so Mark, you can count on me as a board member and you can count on uh, Congresswoman Maloney for her support as well. Thank you, Marie, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna have to leave soon, um, but I want to say that I'm in support of this. Um, I know I'm not wanting to make a comparison to Smorgasburg, but I think um, that one can do that to say that space is used um, in this way. And if it's going to be used, I think it's wonderful to have uh, somebody that has a legacy and a history um, uh, in this place um, to be part of the park um, concession and, and have a lease. I, I think it's great. Can I ask one question before we come to resolution or if someone else has a question, which is Mark, was there ever any problem when you had either the concession or the lease in the backyard with regards to the park? Um, so there, there, yes and no. <laughs> there, oh. there was. I mean, yes and no. There was um, an SLA violation that that just got cleared up because of COVID. It took a long time, but essentially, uh, there was a time period when Mark was only open on Saturdays. Essentially, the I mean, it gets a convoluted thing, but there was an SLA violation. Um, it's been cleared up. It had to do with not serving food, just using smorgasburg food as the food at the bar. Okay. And it was um, a misunderstanding in that Mark had gotten permission from the state to do that. SLA said, whoa, 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 doesn't matter what New York State Park says, what, says was okay. Your liquor license said you would prepare food. It didn't say you would have food available. Um, again, the landlord, the New York State Parks, that had been the whole agreement of what was happening. But um, but that will be moved because it, that's, it's moved now. It's been solved. It went to you know the whole thing. We went through like we were wrong. We had permission, but we were wrong. It's been it's been cleared up. Was held accountable, but that has officially been finished and solved. Right. So yes, but there you know. 
but things were copacetic with the park up there. I think so. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. We we paid our rent on time every year. We paid 5% of gross sales. So, you know, like we 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 think we are good tenants. We think we gave them or Mark thinks he was good. We, sorry. I'm his friend. He he paid we gave them income Everybody. and we think we we're good tenants. Everybody. You know, hosted movie nights. Yeah. Everybody knows that I am, you know, so not... Okay. Well, well, I'd like to make a motion that we um that the, we ask the community board for to vote vote in favor of a letter of support for Biba in their um, effort to get a lease from state parks. Um, yeah, I, I would say I, I I agree with that. I feel like um, you know the footprint that they they want to you know, I guess reestablish is very small, and I think it's important to support diverse use of the new slab. Um, especially yeah, with a, you know, a, you know, legacy, uh, you know, uh, Polish American business owner. Um, I think that's really key and also it'll provide, re you know, additional revenue to the park and which sounds like, you know, that would be very helpful. Maybe help extend those hours in the morning, um, or, you know, whatever it may be. And so, um, yeah, so I'm, I personally, I'm. I think I think it's a good idea. Just to to support you know, to. Support. I have another thought. Um, Ryan, are you still there? Okay, Ryan. Yes. We're, yeah, we're here. Okay, has Mark talked to a real estate attorney because something called a licensing agreement might be the way to go. Um, uh, it's I think it technically is a licensing agreement. I think it's technically not a lease, but a licensing agreement. I can yeah. share with you guys the actual documents, but that I think is the actual language of what it is. That's yeah. what that that I is actually, that is what it is, right? Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. It is a licensing. So agreement. yeah. So I, I I I looked over those documents. I used to be an attorney, so I looked over those documents a long time ago, and it, it's not. It's technically not a lease. It's just a. It's it's a licensing agreement. So for that, you might need an attorney and I have a lot of experience with that and I can, I can give you like a fabulous attorney to speak to. If, if that's something that, you know, would help, I don't know. It's up to Mark. Yeah, I think a lot of this though, is like the blueprint for how this works is already there. We just need the park to come back and agree to that, right? Like we we've gone through the rings and the the rigmarole and the ups and downs. Everything's in black and white. Mark Mark has it in front of him. We've reviewed the paperwork. It's just getting the state to agree to the old terms under a new setup of what Mark is trying to uh, yeah. complete, right? It's it's not a concessions that's open to the park. It is a restaurant that has a backyard seating. And it, 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 to me, it makes sense because, you know, as someone with a restaurant on Bedford Avenue and watching everybody go to Smorgasburg and the garbage cans pile over and over and over and trash in the street everywhere, my busters and myself personally picking up that trash, I feel like the same thing's going to happen and has happened in the backyard of, of Mark's uh, arena. And when he had that little 2,500 square foot space, that's actually so far back in the park that if you're sitting there, you can't even see uh, the water sometimes. He was constantly cleaning. He, his guys were going out into the park to pick up trash. So having this backyard is, is actually an attribute to the state park because it will now have somebody with a watchful eye sitting back there and helping to clean up. And, and that's what was happening before. So I think you would do very well to confer with a real estate attorney that specializes in licensing agreements. And uh, and I can recommend a fabulous person for that. Great, thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Mary. Steve, do you want to rearticulate the resolution and then someone can second it? Um, okay, yeah. Um, that the board basically. Uh, letter of support. Make make a make a you know, basically uh, I guess write a letter. Recommending that um, the state, uh, you know, the state of New York Parks and Recreation, 
um, issue a license for Biba to operate in a uh, the a small designated portion of the slab adjacent to their property. Is and I guess, you know, yeah, and they could just add the reason, some of the reasons, you know, like, like you know, just for instance, it's just, you know, Mark, uh, the owner's Mark's history in the neighborhood, uh, Polish um, down. Jen, you have issues with that? Jen, I think was clapping. Clapped and then she did a thumbs down. <laughs> Jen, you're muted. It was scary, but I have a little emoji that I have never used before. Okay. I'm sorry. Now I'm 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 muted. Oh. Now you're not muted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To support. Yeah. So, to um, support this owner who's had a legacy in the neighborhood, a, le a legacy with this park. And again, to support diverse use of the um, of this newly you know, re you know this recreated slab, and um, you know promote you know revenue going back to the state parks department. Anybody have any other anything want to add to that? Or second it? Anyone want to second it? Well, do we like the motion? Is that the motion? Some. Okay, then that's a motion. They want a second. <laughs> I'll second the motion. Okay, Willis. Okay, and I guess we need a roll call, Marie. Marie? Bill Caponegro? Trina McKeever? Yes. Mr. Carbone? Teresa Cinciata? Teresa? I don't see her on the call. Mr. Chesler? Yes. Mr. Goldstein? Katie Denny Horowitz? Uh, yes. Mr. Elkins? Yes. Mr. Leibovitz? Mr. Michelli? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. Mary Domerick? Yes. Jan Peterson? Jan? Jan, you're muted. I don't see her on the call. I see her. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Capucci? My picture is up there. Yes. Mr. Berger? Mr. Raymond? I mean, yes. Emmett? Yes. Mr. Weiser? There's nine people answering the call. Nine yes. Woohoo, thank you guys. Um, Mark, Mark wanted to let you all know that he turned 70 at the end of this month and he's having a birthday at Viva on December 18th and everyone is invited to come celebrate 70 years of Mark Negovitsky. Happy birthday, Mark. Thank you. Happy birthday. birthday. This is Mary. Happy I'm birthday. sending you the name of the attorney. Thank you. Okay, I'm texting it to you now. Thank you guys. Okay. Leslie. 
Hi. Uh, thank you all for having me tonight. Um, I have a couple of things. I just want to give everyone um, uh, an update on what's going on in the park and what's coming next. And if I may share my screen, I will show you some images. I wonder if, if maybe before you start, someone can mute because you're echoing. Okay. Do I have the power to share my screen oh, no. at this moment? I'm sorry. I hope this is I'm easier. sorry, Leslie. What did you ask? Do I have permission to share my screen? Um, let me see if I can click you on. Okay, thank you. Ah, thank Sometimes you. it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, it just said I am now the presenter. And let me. Okay, can everyone see this image of the uh, Site-wide rehabilitation and improvements phase two sign. Yes. yes. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, starting where we left off last um, uh, summer or so, um, you know, just to take one step back in time, we all came together. Uh, we had extensive meetings in the park, also virtual meetings to talk about um, the site improvements. And as a result of all those meetings and uh, a significant review, we all decided on a park plan. And that's the image that you see on the right side of this sign. Because at the time we were already in construction for some of uh, what had been planned, and there was a contract let on that, when we devised that when we put together a change order for the contractor, which required Office of State Controller review, um, the controller said, wait a minute, this is this is a, a very substantially enhanced scope. Um, it's not properly a change order. What you need to do, state parks instead, is rebid the project. So um, you may all recall that that's exactly what we did. <clears throat> and uh, uh, so we, but instead of leaving the, the park all torn up, we put it back together as if you went there today, you would see it. There are no construction fences and everybody's been able to use the park for some several weeks and months. We did go out to bid again. We have a contractor. The, um, it's a different contractor. The contract is being approved now, being reviewed and approved now by the Office of the State Comptroller. And we anticipate that that contract will be approved and that the contractor can mobilize back on site in early January, shortly past the new year. And what they will be doing is exactly what we all talked about and agreed upon before. This image here is actually the construction sign that will go up. Uh, as soon as that chain link, uh, you know, transparent construction sign goes up in early January, and we're uh, we're creating the new lawn and commemorative garden. Uh, you'll see in the image. I don't know. Can you see my cursor? You see the gardens on the inside of the circular path, on on at least two sides, and then this little insert is. One of the bioswales, again, for stormwater management purposes, but that will be all landscaped and planted with, with uh, water loving native plants. Uh, and according to the planting plan that we shared with everyone last spring and summer when we're in the park, this is all native plantings. Um, the only thing that we've done different from when we were all last together reviewing things is we've actually added some more trees, uh, same planting species, same set of species, but we've we've found spots where we can add more trees, which will grow into more shade for the park. So, you know, a lot of the work that will be done is site work. 
and it's underground. It has to do with installing the proper stormwater management system and a lot of uh, regrading to create the topography to uh, better complement the stormwater management system and, and complement the, um, the landscaping. So, that means that a lot of the park has to be torn up again. The construction fence initially, starting in January, will be in pretty much exactly the same location and cover the same footprint as the construction fence that was up last year. Um, but full disclosure, in approximately April, and I don't have an exact date yet because the contractor doesn't have their schedule in place yet because their contract isn't fully approved yet. But starting in mid April through May, more of the park will have to be closed off to the public so that we can accomplish the renovations on this northern side of the park here where we connect to Bushwood Park. Um, the whole project, all in, will be completed by the end of May 2022. Uh -huh. So we're really talking January, February, March, April, May, five months um, for this inconvenience to the public um, so that this whole park can be completely finished. The um, North 8th entrance will mostly be open during construction. There are a couple times just because of some of the site work that has to be done. There'll be a day or two when um, that might be compromised. The park house will always be open. The restrooms will always be open. And um, our park staff is thrilled. We get compliments pretty much every day on how clean and accessible and great the restrooms are. Um, the slabs, for the most part, will also be accessible during construction. Uh, we do have a little more work to do around the North 7th um, edge, because um, as you know, we installed new landscaping there. But again, if any any closures there will be really incidental and, and brief. So once we have the actual construction schedule and the breakdown of when the um, second part of the fence will go up we'll I'll, I'll be back and and share that with you we'll also post all of this on the parks web page and and keep all this up to date so that everyone has easy reference points um so those are the site wide improvements right it's the porous pathways or pervious pathways it's the stormwater management system it's uh significantly more landscaping and uh, all the new park furniture is coming in in this phase too, as well as um, all of the picnic tables will, or not, excuse me, not all, but a, a good uh, percentage of the picnic tables will be getting big shade umbrellas. Uh, and that'll help a lot because, you know, a lot of the park is really exposed and, and folks like to get shade. Uh, the dog run will also remain open throughout uh, this entire project that is unaffected. So, um, the other thing that is happening, um, as part of this, uh, continued improvements to the park is we are, uh, as promised going through a, a process. Primarily with Marsha P. Johnson's family, but it's a small group of um, self selected family members and uh, from our trans working group that helped to um, design and uh, draft the, the text for the interpretive signs that are installed in the park, uh, telling the story of Marsha P. Johnson, her, her, her history, her work, her cohorts. Um, those, those signs will be um, finally placed also uh, in the phase two site work. But in addition, we, we discussed with everyone and promised that we would revisit 
public art in the park to commemorate Marsha. And there are two main elements to that that have been identified as as locations for the pieces that are yet to be decided on. One is at the park entrance, gateway art, um, and it will be part of the entrance itself um, to, to more announce the fact that you're entering into this, this, this park, this special place that is named after Marsha P. Johnson and is meant to commemorate her life, her work, and, and um, all that that represents. The other two red circles you see here are agreed upon locations for one piece. These are alternate locations as yet to be decided on, uh, which one will be the one um, for a, 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 a piece of more monumental standalone commemorative art. And the work of the committee, which again is family members, um, trans women of color, um, we have community representation on the committee, uh, and then the agency, you know, the landowners on the committee, uh, and two art, public art advisors uh, from Brooklyn. We have um, uh, Kendall Henry and Charlotte Cohen as the volunteer art advisors. The entire committee is, is volunteer. And the committee has met virtually uh, approximately three times so far. And the focus to date has been uh, first in the first instance, you know, obviously getting to know each other and, and just figuring out what the, the, the purpose of the committee is and the, the general timeline target for the committee to um, help make some decisions. The second meeting was um, really about what, who is Marsha the person and who is Marsha the icon and what values are associated with that from the family and from the trans community that they want to, that they want the art pieces and particularly the standalone more monument piece, commemorative piece um, to evoke and to educate, uh, bearing in mind that the, um, the, the piece, whatever it may be, whether it's representational or abstract, that is all part of the conversation and no decisions have been made about that will be permanent. It's meant to be permanent. So keeping in mind that, you know, situations change over time, just getting the folks on the committee and the family in particular to think about, you know, that, that aspect of permanence. Um, the committee that are, the advisors are also helping um, folks to think through materials, you know, what materials uh, are durable and have more of a sense of permanence uh, that the advisors have shared images of different public art pieces around uh, New York City and, and, and beyond to just kind of evoke um, thinking about this. The timeline, and so that's, those are the meetings to date. We have a, a couple more meetings to specifically talk about people's thoughts about the gateway and all of these meetings and the information that comes out of them are meant to help inform the request for proposals or the, um, uh, we'll just call them requests for proposals that the state will then do to invite artists to apply and submit proposals. There'll be one uh, RFQ for the gateway art, and there will be a second RFP for the monument pieces, piece, excuse me, one piece. Um, and they'll be issued at the same time. They will refer to one another so that 
people will hopefully understand that um, this is all meant to be essentially one um, two part project. And the intent and hope is that artists will be selected um, next summer, July, August, 2022, and the fabrication design and then fabrication will take place, um, you know, that we've given roughly almost a year for that from August 2022 to June 2023. Again, these are target times, not set in stone yet. The target installation for the two areas is in the early summer of 2023, so that by August 2023, um, both of these commemorative pieces um, or treatments, whatever you want to call them, since they're not decided yet, it's it's hard to know exactly what word is the best to use, will be in place um, for Marsha P. Johnson's birthday in August of 2023. Um, so that is that piece of it. Um, in terms of what's happening in the park right now, uh, I hope you've all been to the park and I hope you have all seen and visited the park house. Um, we've had a number of small community events. Um, we had the uh, harvest festival that actually wasn't so small. The weather really tried to make it small. It rained uh, late that morning, but nonetheless, I think a few hundred people showed up uh, and it was just really fun with lawn games. Uh, we had the uh, Drag Queen Story Hour, uh, and uh, about 50 people show up just for that. Um, we've done that at FDR for Freedoms State Park in the past. It's been a, a, a wild success, so we thought, let's bring it to, to Marsha P. Johnson as well. The park house is open, and it does have public hours uh, for, you know, drop-in. We've had a lot of uh, kids and their families or caretakers come in. Um, generally, the park house is open Wednesdays and Saturdays, um, uh, morning slot 10 to 12, and then again in the afternoon, 1.30 to 4.30. We've got a great little library in there. It's it's geared toward kids and youth, but um, really great stuff. And we also have um, materials for arts and crafts. It's just a very pleasant space. If you follow the park on social media, you will know that uh, we have a number of environmental uh, education activities uh, announced for December. The winter waterfowl walk on December 11th, 3 to 4.30. It's a bird walk, uh, focusing on which birds are there in the winter. Uh, we've got a nice um, story session uh, focusing on snow stories and winter solstice on, on uh, both Saturday December 18th, and then again on, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, the December 21st. Um, so all sorts of sweet little winter stuff, various cleanups. We're always eager to have folks um, help us do beach cleanups because, you know, with CSOs, the, the water washes up junk all the time. Uh, we had a, um, uh, a camp from Long Island, uh, uh, a um, Jewish heritage camp of young kids and their families from uh, Long Island a uh, couple Saturdays ago, helping us, or excuse me, Sundays ago, doing a big beach cleanup, and that was great. Um, so I thank you all, and if if you'd like, I'm happy to answer questions. One thing that came up, uh, Leslie, am I on mute or not? We hear you, Jan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm still unsure what I'm on. I just want to congratulate you, Leslie, because you really went through a whole thing where the community jumped all over you. You rebuilt, you regrouped, you took great. And I'm sure people said it to you before, but I think a pretty amazing spirit. And the process that you just talked about using, I think, is the kind of process and values that we in this neighborhood or many of us in this neighborhood have. And it's just one see that kind of participation and that kind of thought 
uh, going in. So I just want to congratulate you on that. Even though I'm mad at you from your uh, many, many long, long time ago when we had another plan that didn't go through, but that's how things go. Participation isn't always <laughs> in the same way, but great spirit, Leslie. Jess, if I may, thank you very much. That means a lot coming from you. And I'm I'm really sorry about that other thing. I, I tried to reach you and apologize. Uh, I'm happy to talk about it anytime. At <laughs> Nothing. Anyway, thank you very much for your generosity of spirit. All right. Um, yeah, I would, uh, Leslie, thanks a lot for the presentation. Um, but also, I guess, just in the name of transparency and also what uh, Jerry brought up at the last four board meeting is um, the state invited me to be the community representative on the um, the art advisory committee, and I've been been attending, and it's um, really uh, I'll just say it's, it's very exciting what's happening so far. I think something really special is going to happen in the park. Back to the point is Jerry wondered, well, should the community board have representation on this committee? He asked. Um, Put it to Leslie if if that um, you know should be is proper or warranted, and um, and you know and so and then it was conveyed to him that I, as a community member, um, I'm on the committee, and so I thought we'd bring it up for just you know discussion about if um, what what he wanted to do like if I, I essentially I I guess it was you know an oversight in my part. Not to mention it to the committee and the board, but I guess I thought of it as it's not, you know, part of redesigning the park or creating a new park. It's bringing art in the park, which um, doesn't necessarily come through the community board. I guess I was thinking in those terms. So it's significant, you know, in terms of this particular project. So, um, so I guess I don't know. I guess putting out there would if the committee. But you are at my continuing well, I'm on as a committee member, but also functioning as a board rep and I could report back um, on a regular basis. Or if the um, if Leslie and the state is open. <laughs> having someone else, you know, represent the board. Well, Steve, I think it makes a lot of sense for among our committee members for you to be the representative from the board. Uh, that's on the art committee. If if Leslie thinks that the community agrees that the community board should have representation in the, on the committee, because Steve, you were very involved in the design changes that took place, and have worked closely with Leslie and the family, the Mar Marsha P. Johnson's family, and the other people involved. And and I think that it makes a lot of sense for Steve to be the representative. So Leslie, would you be open to having Steve's represent having Steve be on the committee as a committee member, but also as a representative from for the community from the community board? Absolutely. You know, the I think that the the original notion was was exactly that, that Steve both represents the community as as a as a local resident, um, but also the fact that he's on the community board and also his his um his uh I mean, I think Steve, did you attend every single um, meeting we had in the park as well as every single Zoom meeting? I, I, I think you did. I think you were there pretty much every minute that I was there, and I, I was definitely there every minute. So, you know, that 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 really spoke your commitment, just being involved in so many parts of it and so much. And 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 many people on this call were. Um, it, it it just, you know, we. We envisioned purely for um, um, uh, for practical reasons a, a, a relatively small committee, but envisioned that each one of the committee members would be the 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 voice and kind of the the dissemination system to their own communities, and that's very much the charge with the um, the trans working group. Each one of them represents a, a nonprofit in a larger community. Um, and you know that was the notion that that Steve would 100% be community board and and community member. The other expert can among I, us who can I, can I just interject here? Sure. I believe like what 
such as we had with other committees like Nick Nick and, and others, we as the community board would appoint someone and that's usually done through the chair. So um, I think the, the uh, census here <laughs> that it should be something that comes from the community board chair, not that someone wears just two hats. Does that make sense? Sure. So, Marie, what you're saying is it should go back to Dialis with maybe a committee recommendation that Steve be the person. That could but, be but done. I'm just know that that um, I don't know if there's anyone else who's interested in this. You know, it hasn't been put to the floor. It hasn't been put out there. Right. So uh, I think that that's you know just to make it fair and and the and the choices with the chair of the board. You know, we've done this before with other committees. We've done this with this particular park as well when we've had people on there. So I think that I that's, think you know, that's a sentiment. I think it should. Uh, Jen, we lost you. I said that's our, our process. We should create a process. That's our internal thing. We should decide that internally. It's not up to Leslie. Uh, how we go about choosing our representatives. I, for example, do not want the chair to have all that power. I'd like to have a bro I would like to have the board decide, you know, or c some other structure, but I, I don't need to get into that now. And we do have an outreach committee that uh, could be putting that on their agenda. That's anyway. It's Leslie, internal. I just we want to need. point out that there is another art expert among us, and that's Katie Denny Horowitz, who has been very involved in public art throughout her career. And maybe maybe she could, Katie, you can speak up if you're interested or if you have time. I know you've got a very- yeah, you're a public art expert too. Well, I only <laughs> have one public artist. <laughs> it's, um, uh, no, it's funny. I had, I had emailed Leslie uh, before this discussion started. I was like, I think there was a mention of like maybe having another community member um, so yeah, if that's if that's an option, I you know I've served on other art committees before, um, and would be happy to do so if that makes sense. That's In great. I'm, I'm I'm happy to um, take that back to my commissioner. I, I just want to um, just as a um, parameter, uh, the the committee. Um, you know, we've had the 1st set of meetings and because of the schedule and because of state procurement, you know, we're, we're going to keep going. So for a new member to come on, we'll need to have that person come on fast and uh, get the person up to speed. Katie, if that's you, that's great. Um, and I just, I guess what I'm trying to say without being too blunt is that we probably don't want it change the schedule of the uh, the procurement target um, to expand the the uh, to expand any of the process uh, simply because we really want to get all of this done so if that doesn't sound bad in any way I just wanted to point that out well should as a committee should we um nominate or should we i'm trying to think marie help me here what what do you suggest that we do in terms of going back to dialis and uh, the only thing i could suggest is that katie send an email to dialis indicating her interest I, I don't want to think for the chairperson of the board but um i'm trying to remember the last that. the last committee meeting it was Jerry, right, had recommended uh, an official, right, Steve, that was it. Jerry had recommended an official community board member. I, I, that's how this conversation started. Steve, Steve, you're muted. Is it the, at the November full board meeting? If I remember. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah, I was just saying if, you know, there are two things. One is, is there going to be an additional member? That's one decision. And then the other thing, what I was saying is if, if there's a decision for an additional member, I was just saying, I'd be happy to do it. Um, so I'm not saying that there needs to be an additional member. 
Um, it was someone else's idea. Um, so I don't want I don't know if that makes sense for me to just reach out to D. Alice saying that I want to the state to add a member um, and that it should be me. Um, so. Well, maybe Steve, we could, the committee could nominate Steve as the community board representative and recommend that Katie, if the, um, if the state would like another member, Katie, that Katie, you, that you realize that Katie has the expertise and could possibly join the committee as a latecomer, but Steve would be the member that represents the community board. But, but, but Katie, Katie is a very learned, Katie has the expertise to join and also can, has the community board connection, but the, the committee, maybe we or can recommend. I, I could just Katie. be the, the community, the community rep and Katie could be the, the board rep. So, or we could do that. Uh, yeah. If there, you know, the state will allow, you know, if that's feasible to them, but that we're already, you know, full steam ahead with the process, but, um, but, you know, the, I agree the board should have, you know, really should have representation, whether it's whoever it is. So, um, so. Well, maybe that what the committee should do, Steve, because you're on it, you're, 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 you're involved is the committee recommend, and this is what I think, and maybe if someone wants to second it, that the committee recommend to Dialis that Steve continue to play the play the commu community role that he's been playing, but take on the additional responsibility of representing the community board. And secondly, that if um, if the state is interested in adding another person to to the arts committee, that they consider adding Katie Denny Horowitz. Does anyone want to second that? I'll second that. Okay. Do we need to vote on it, Marie? Well, basically, it's a recommendation. I'm sorry, I, I, I have to unmute myself. Oh. Um, you're going to have to make the the recommendation clearer because it was kind of didn't really flow together well enough for me to write it down. Okay. I. I we recommend the the committee would like to recommend that Steve, who has been um, participating on the arts committee in his capacity as a community member, be nominated to be the representative also of the community board. And secondly, if the state is willing to take on another member, that they consider adding Katie Denny Horowitz to. But that that actually, if if Steve. Katie Dennett Horowitz to the committee um, in that she has expertise. But that part, maybe we're not even asking Dialis that. We're just asking to, for Dialis to consider Steve. We I should bring the entire can. idea to the to the full board. Yes. Without going through the process of voting now. Let, maybe this is a general conversation. Just I know it was pointed out last time to avoid that there is other fully members there. We don't know what they think about this. That's true. Maybe we can just add it to the committee report and bring it before the whole board. Um, and you are having a meeting also, aren't you, Sante? Uh, it seems to me that this is the yeah, we have a meeting uh, on a different uh, topic, which uh, yeah, but I'm just saying you're going to run into very trouble. complex. We're running into trouble by not talking Hello? about this thoroughly. I, am I still being heard? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm overly heard. I'm sorry, but I'm just saying is that it's really important for us to get the roles and responsibilities clear. How people, because we've always had the same people representing us. We don't even know who represents us where, and I think. That getting this representation down, what, what does the job require? Um, and how do people get selected and how do we do it is going to take some time. That's all. I, I but, don't want to interrupt you, Jan, but you, um, some, you depending, will. Depending on, depending on who's making the offer for the particular, whether it's a panel, whether it's a committee or, you know, a community yeah. advisory group. Usually it lies in they ask for a recommendation from the chair of the board. So, um, I'm bringing that up because you're, you know, you're making it more open. Whereas they may say just 
I want to be more, more open, obviously. Board. So that. So Maria, yeah, are you I, suggesting? I think we are too. I, I am suggesting that the state give us criteria. Okay. If they right. want a, an appointment from the chair of the board, which they've done before in the past. And you and I have also sat on an arts commission. Remember back when we were deciding on, on um, what a panel that was. You know, you were on the panel, and I was there also representing the board. So, I think that's the model, and the state has to make that clear. And I'm just saying we should review what we want. We never give to somebody else the power to decide what they want. Is my view. So you can keep doing that and then we will never have any power and we'll just be the ladies auxiliary of all these things. Well, I guess, Leslie, it starts with you asking if, if you would for community board representation on the arts committee and maybe explaining where you are in the process and how the process can not be started over. Just also just a point that. The board chair creates all the committees and points all the members to the committees yes. and can create right. special committees, et cetera, et cetera. So um, normally th that doesn't go through the entire board. That's true. So not that we couldn't discuss it and vote on it, but. But that's why I'm saying what I'm saying, Steve. Yeah. Well, the board doesn't meet again until January and we'll have the, talk. the, the committee will have their fourth meeting um, in a week. So, <laughs> <laughs> again, put it in the hands of the chair. Direct, you know, direct the question to the chair from the state parks. Of we have this committee, we're setting it up, or it's been running. We want a representative on the committee. That one. Okay, and Marie, you're saying that Leslie should be do, writing that letter, right? The, asking Dialis for a member. It's their, it's their committee. They have right. to tell us what the structure is. Right. And then, okay. and then and then responsibilities. Is that okay, Leslie? Um, <laughs> I think I got a little confused in there. Sorry. So you know, I there's also the the kind of you know, the different relationship the state has to the community boards. So, uh, we, you know, we, we, we want community input. I, I think, you know, to, to Janice's very gracious point, I think that we've, we've proven that right. And, um, so we don't have a formal process or a formal structure with, with New York city community boards, right? That's kind of our stumbling block. So that's. One of the reasons we just reached out again, and I, I really apologize if, if we've inadvertently created a, a, a tangle here. Um, but, you know, I can take it back that. to my commissioner if, but it sounds like just adding another person doesn't get at what the board needs for board structural and, right. and protocol that's right. reasons. That's so right. That's where I'm at. A, I, I don't know if I can help with that. I have, my hand, I have my hand. Yeah, I was going to say, so this is um, when I was environmental chair, there were many CAGs that were state DEC run and I served on several because I was the chair. And when I became overwhelmed with being on too many CAGs, we appointed other people to, to it's a pretty, not standard, but it, it was sort of normal type of thing. Um. It was different for me when when I was the CB representative. Every time I spoke at like the Newtown Creek thing, I would have to say like speaking as what the community. I would always like I was there to represent the community. Laura Hoffman was there to represent individual residents. So like my role was to constantly put back. It wouldn't. I think that um, right now people are making it very complicated when the environmental committee has done this many times and interacted with the state constantly and maybe. The parks committee should speak to the environmental committee. Those of us that were chairs to kind of go like how we worked it through the years, because it, it's really um, not that crazy of a process. But that was just my two cents. If that it's was not, but it, it comes from Jerry's complaining at the November board well, meeting. I mean, again, I have another issue for this meeting, and I have two people that have been waiting 
from the beginning, and I don't know if I get to bring it up, but that's why I said this is a big kettle of fish that takes some more discussion, and it's going to go on. Right. I have about many I'll, points. I'll just say that there's a precedence, and I don't know what the complaints were necessarily about, but there's definitely a precedence that no one's ever complained about before. And it's probably not in the bylaws or anything else. Maybe, maybe Marie, I can talk. Call the maybe I can follow up with um, the board office and see if I can get some clarity, and we can table the discussion in the committee. Right, I'm on the bylaw committee, so I will take it back to the bylaw committee. Okay, Leslie, okay. is there anything else you want to add? I guess what we're doing is tabling this. Which um, sense. No, just, thank you all, and thank you. I, I I really do hope you've all been to the park lately, and I'm park is great. You know, I'm sorry we have to tear it up again, but just close your eyes, and it'll be done soon, and then it'll be done done. And um, thank you There's for this chat. Yeah. That too. That's right, Trina. I'm sorry, I had my hand yeah. raised. In a question for for Liz. Oh, Kevin, I'm sorry. Okay, That's go ahead. I, I think it seems like the the images have changed, and so now it's this little tiny. It's like this little tiny outline hand. It's very difficult to see if you have a, like a dark background. Anyway, so um, yeah, uh, thank you, Leslie. Um, the plans look great, and it's very exciting to see how far they've come. Um, yeah, I just I really wanted to bring up, and I, I I know we got into the whole conversation about this, but I I really wanted to bring up again, um, you know, all these improvements to the park and all the improvements that are coming on the waterfront. With 50 Kent next year and Motiva in the following year, um, hopefully Box Street Park, like all these things that are happening, um, you know, and especially with Bushwick Inlet Park. And I really wanted to um, bring up concern about the fencing between Bushwick Inlet Park and between Marsha P. Johnson Park, um, as well as the hours um, of the park itself, um, which, you know, it's currently, as I understand it, it was, you know, nine to nine. Um, so it's not open in the morning um, for folks before work, um, you know, that might live in the area, want to, you know, go for a walk or have their coffee or whatever it may be, catch the sunrise in this um, large park space that the community has fought for, um, you know, and especially with Bushwick Inlet Park open from 6 to 10. Um, I think that those hours should be better as well, but I think that at the very least, the community um, should have hours that match the park right next door to it. Um, and that, you know, as more of these spaces come online, um, more of Bushwick Inlet Park becomes realized, um, you know, it just, it just doesn't seem, I know mean, we don't, you know, Gantry, um, you know, Gantry Park, uh, Gantry State Park and Hunters Point have no fencing, um, and effectively have no hours and there's no fence between those spaces. Um, you know, and I think that as we look at, you know, a connected waterfront, um, all this park space the community has fought for, um, I really would like to see more from the state um, as far as that goes, you know, to have that fence come down um, and to have those hours extended, um, at least in parity with um, the park right next door to it, that it connects to, um, you know, and so I, I don't know if anybody else in the committee feels similarly, you know, I, um, I know Steve had mentioned the hours earlier. Thank you, Steve. Um, you know, and Willis, Willis has got thumbs up. Um, so I don't know if that's something I, I don't want to, you know, I, with apologies to Jan specifically, who I know there's other stuff here, but I just think this is really important. Um, I think it, this is really important because I mean, you know, this is now the, you know, the the final form in so many ways of what the community has been fighting for, fully realized. Um, you know, and it's it's out. Um, you know, it's it's it is it is fenced off um, from one another, and it is closed off from people. You know, we don't lock and close McCarran Park overnight. We don't lock and close McGulrick Park overnight, and I think that maybe there's a conversation to be had about that on the waterfront. But I think at the very least, the idea of having it open from six to nine in the morning when Bushwick Inlet is open, or closing it at ten when Bushwick Inlet Park closes, you know, I'll I'll let anybody else who might feel strongly about this speak on it. But I I just um, I we we have seen state parks go so far um, in these plans, and that has been really incredible and a testament both to the state parks and to this community. Um, and I think that, you know, when we talk about access, um, you know, real access, uh, we should be going further. Um, I think this is really the bare minimum. So, um, yeah, thank you. I just, I'll just back that up. I mean, I think we have to continue to bring this up like again and again, because it is like, 
this is going to be our Brooklyn Bridge Park in this part of Brooklyn, and it's also it's comparable to Hunters Point and Gantry, and those are waterfront parks and very similar type neighborhoods. So, you know, why are we being you know shut out from open waterfront space at 9 p.m. and all the fencing? So, I, yeah, there's not not much more to say aside from what Kevin did, but I, I. I agree and feel like we need as a committee and as a community board need to keep pushing this issue. Yeah, I, I concur with uh, with Willis and, uh, and and Kevin. Um, it just it just seems to be just a natural thing to do to have you know, an open border between the two parks, like uh, Gantry and Hunters Point. Um, and I just I remember during the the redesign process of Marsha Johnson. There were community members coming to the Shreds who were naturally doing that in their design suggestions. So it just, um, I don't you know, the, I can't remember what the original purpose of the, the fence was, um, but I just wonder if its purpose has, you know, sunsetted and, um, you know, they, they, somehow the two the two parks can have a, you know, an open border. And it's, I agree, it's a shame. I feel like it's almost the, prime, the one of the prime times of a park is to go in first thing in the morning um, to have access, and especially for working people who just want to have time in the park before they, you know, they go to their job or otherwise. Um, so I just wonder if that's something that both, you know, Leslie and Mary, you guys could explore. Um, because yeah, it would be it would be a wonderful thing as yeah, as you know, the the whole waterfront opens up with the esplanades and et cetera. Was there I just want to remind everyone that it's 8.24 and the meeting is to end at 9 o'clock. Leslie, do you know if in Long Island City there was ever a border between Gantry State and Hunters um, Point Park? Was there ever a fence? Uh, no, it's it's totally porous to the city. It's more like um, uh, Hudson River Park, right? It just connects to all the... Um, the city sidewalks, it's very much of a, a, a perimeter park in that way. And so I'll just leave it there. <laughs> okay. Mary, do you have anything you want to add? Um, I mean, we can explore it. I don't know. Um... Yeah, I, I, I have to talk to Marty. Um, this is a little beyond me. So Leslie and I can get together and bring it. Could you bring it to the next parks committee meeting? I don't know when that will be. Hopefully not too long, but maybe if you guys can. Trina, uh, could could we do a, a letter? Like at the parks committee, if the, if the parks committee is in support of taking down and the community wants the fence down, can we write a letter to New York State and New York City Parks asking that they officially explore this possibility. Like, can the community board sure. sort of, like, with a letter, push it forward? Good idea. Uh, great idea. Do we need to vote on that as a committee? Yeah. yeah. Can I also just ask ask a question real quick of Mary about, like, what the rationale is for Transmitter Park is not locked at night. Bushwick Inlet Park is. Right. So. Once the rest of Bushwick Inlet Park is built, we will stop locking that park at night. Um, the issue at Bushwick Inlet Park is that we have no visibility from the street into the park. Um, and there were safety concerns. If you get into the back of the park, if something happens in the back of the park. Um, and so once we have, you know, once there's no dead end in the park, once there's an area to get out. If you walk into the park and let's say something happens. When you're down by the waterfront, there's one exit out of the park. So, right. So, more rationale for getting rid of the fence between the state park and also having a connection to North 7th Street at the state park as well. Like, we're like creating this problem because we only want one entrance that now we're also, so we're dealing with that's a whole other separate issue. There's only one play, one way to get in and out, which is limiting the ability of people to enjoy the park when it's open. And now it's like, that's also the rationale for restricting hours to the park as well. So, once I, we build the rest of Bushwick and Park, that 
that will change. Sure, but I mean, yep. no, Mary, that's going to be years off, especially yep. the city. The city storage parcel is going to be the last one to go, and that's the adjacent one. So, I I would make a motion that we, as a community board, write a letter to form a letter to city and state parks, asking that there is access to the state park on North Seventh Street. That there's continuous open hours at both parks, and that there's no fence in between the parks. Okay. If I could chime in on that, since we're discussing, um, you know, because I'm I am conflicted on it in that, you know, as a community member and park advocate, I'm like all park, you know, park access, park access. Um, it is, you know, very tricky along the waterfront, you know, as we've seen in transmitter park throughout the pandemic, you know, during the night, there has been parties there and illicit activity and, you know, even places like Domino that have, you know, security staff and hours when they're supposed to close, but they don't have a gate there. There was also a lot of issues there with public safety and so that, um, you know, providing all night access without the appropriate increase in resources to provide security to ensure the proper maintenance of the park so it doesn't get destroyed and the safety of the people. Um, I think that that could be a really challenging ask to do to provide that kind of access without, you know, additional resources um, to go along with it. So, Sorry, it's bedtime. If you, hear, if you hear the wailing in the background, sorry. I, I, I mean, the motion is stated is not about the specific hours. So if they want to continue for now, closing the parks at ten o'clock, I think having having more access, so there's more egress, which is a safety issue. Having connection between the two parks, which is also a safety issue, and having continuous hours are all fair and address those concerns. If we want to come back, if so, if they want to, you know, so right now, 10 o'clock, right, is when Bushwick Inlet Park's closed. So that would be the, that they have continuous hours. I but, thought you meant by continuous, oh. you meant 24 7. Sorry. You just, no, I mean, so you just want them to come back to that in a few years or whatever. But I just feel like we got to, we got to, like, these are some real parameters that we've been faced with. And so we should start chiseling away at it. I am all for creating accessibility between the parks and connectivity for sure. Because um, those are really fair con concerns. I, I agree, but let's I, I feel like let's try and solve those, but at the same time creating create more access to to those parks. So Willis's motion is to write a letter to the city and state parks asking for, um, so for, for open access to the state park at North 7th for continuous open hours to both the parks, meaning putting the hours at the same time with each, I guess, putting the state park on the hours that Bushwick Inlet Park has and to remove the fence between the two parks. Does someone want a second Willis's? I sec Steve Chesler seconds that. Okay. And I guess uh, Marie, we need a roll call. Bill Caponegro, not present. Rita McKeever? Yes. Frank Carbone, not present. Teresa Cinciata? Not present. You are. Mr. Chesler? Yes. Joel Goldstein? Not present? Uh, yes. Present. Are you yes. arguing? Are you arguing? Okay. What's your, what's what's your, your vote? What's your vote? Yes. Okay. Okay. Katie? Denny Horowitz? Yes. Mr. Elkins? Yes. Abraham Leibovitz? Not present. Sante Michelli. Sante. Mary O'Donnell. Mary. Jan Peterson. Uh. 
What is it? Is it a yes or a no? Jan, I can't hear you. Jan? I said yes. It's frozen. Yes, I can't get okay. this. Mr. Capucci? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> There's something wrong. What? Mr. Capucci? Keith Berger? Emma Raymond? Emma? Simon Weiser? I don't know where people are going off. You're, um, you have seven votes. You short one vote for a quorum. Okay, but the six members still present all voted unanimously. Yes. Yes, okay. Maybe Sante's back now? I don't know. He's not answering. And I don't see him. He's on here. He's just not here. I think we can move on. Okay. Um, Leslie, thank you. Does anyone else before Leslie is finished? Does anyone have anything to add? Thank you for everything. Thank you for all the, the, the hard work and looking thank forward to having it all finished next next spring or early summer. Okay, Me Dan. Too. Thank you so much. I said, all I have is your, the same uh, uh, issue that we have brought up. I have two members of the women's swim group are on phones on here. And uh, they, I just wanted to bring up, I don't know if you're aware that they did start swimming again. They came to the apartment three hours to the women to swim. And this has been, and I, all I say here is that um, all the politics, every single person that got elected, the women swim, which includes our borough president and the, the uh, Lincoln and others. So I am hoping that we don't have to go through another year of trying to deny the women of Williamsburg Greenpoint eight to 10 hours. And just to remind you without long thing because your time is additionally women had had eight, eight hours of time by himself to three hours and uh well four and uh he put it down four and then he allocated at one town hall meet everybody an extra hour when all the women were standing there talking about the fact that they are unable and that's all i want to get across here tonight women or hundred women lining up to get in and you only can have so many women swimming at any given time and you have to have a woman lifeguard. Um, you can't do it if you're allocated one hour. So right now they were given two hours one day fine. They can do that because the right department is not, not charging money. And they can't do it and the women that they don't we don't have enough women showing up and the reason they're showing up is they've had two years now of being messed around so i would like to just bring to the parks committee um i hope that you will support the resolution of the women's committee that the that the park eight to ten hours ten hours preferably for women swim uh, on the new agenda, and anytime any of you want to look at, and, and I'm not going to uh, keep talking, the letters that we have gotten from the Parks Department that will state over and over that it is true that the women are providing the numbers that the, the pool needs to keep open. Because yeah, the it's really hard because you're breaking of up. Citing right. over, do we have three hours, five hours? 
eight hours, whatever hours of swim for women, or should women, and here we have a park people, or to the end of women, I'm going to strand everybody else to swim. And we've already gone through all these issues. So I guess I just want to start the conversation without your having to have it now because you're too tired, um, that we want to have support again from the Parks Committee about this, this pool and that we, people should bring it up because from the Parks Department to you too, you shouldn't be, you know, the, the, the Women's Committee exists just to make sure that women are thought about, not to take on all the work of the other committees. So we hope the Parks Committee will really, you've looked around, uh, Marsha Johnson and the other work you've all done, Steve, and others, because it's really unbelievable situation. And I said two of them are, and Henny and Bell are there yet? I'm here, Henny. I don't know if they are. Do you hear I'm me? I'm also here. On calling me from the side, and they, uh, we can bring send you if you want to see the letters that they have received from Henny. Yeah, do you want to yes. say something? Because I know you've been on for hours. But there's nothing new. Yes. The issue really is, is that now that we have a new uh, uh, mayor coming in, we want to make sure that we go back to what the pool was for 30 to 40 years, where the women really have held this pool uh, uh, together. And we are afraid, and I think we're probably right, that if the statistics of the use of the pool, because even in the summer for you all, the women wanted to use the pool in the summer, they were you're getting cut off. Jan, I don't hear a half a word now. You're completely blocked off. Does anyone uh, hear me? We Is this Henny? If you want to pick up where Jan left off, you're welcome. Well, uh, do you hear me? That's my first question to you. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you so much. I don't know who else hears me. My preference would have been to speak when the entire Parks Department is listening. <laughs> Why so can't I, women swim? Oh, Jan, are you? Do you yeah. hear me? Okay, so Jan, I heard all that you said. I and hear you. Go on. You hear me good? Henny is the head of women. Well, Henny, you're very clear. Please speak. Okay, so I am a member there for over forty years. I don't think that actually when I was hear you, uh, Henny. Nobody hears me? We can hear you, it's yes. Everyone okay. can hear you. Please speak. Okay. So when we had the pool years ago, we had two hours Sunday, two hours Monday, two hours Wednesday, and two hours Friday. And we really deserve to get back those hours. We're not hearing you. Eight hours, no. But we, no. Nobody can hear you. Nobody hears me? We can all hear Everybody her. hears you. Everyone yeah. 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 can hear her. Can, I, can somebody answer me? Do you hear me? Yes, yes. we hear you. It's not going to work. Jane is the only one who cannot hear you. It's not going to work. And this is what we're against. I just want people to Jan, everyone can hear her. You are cutting her off. What? Okay. You are cutting her off. Let her speak. Okay. So is the park department there to listen? I want to know who I am speaking to. I want to know who is listening to me. Is there anyone from the parks department that has the power to, in, to, to bring in more hours for the women's swim? So, Henny, Can this is Mary ask? Selig. Well, yeah, this thing. is Mary Selig yeah. Hussein from the parks department. Okay, great. I'm happy great. to hear so, your Penny, voice, just, and um, you know me as well. Yeah. So, just uh, okay. I think um, just you know, I I think you you know Eileen Dalton too, right? She's the Right, I'm in contact with Eileen as well. I okay. haven't been much now this month, not at all, but she's really, uh, she understands the issue and she agrees that there should be more hours put in for women's swim, especially that the pool is not being utilized. It's the, There are hours and hours in the day that the pool is empty, literally empty. Now it is empty for many reasons, I do believe not only the Orthodox religious, but the public, the general public out there 
is not using the pool out of fear of COVID, okay, fear of taking the, um, in, uh, the, the shots. And so there's all different you know, things happening, but we do have a large crowd of women that are vaccinated, want to join the pool. One hour a Monday is very insufficient. It, it's if you come five minutes late, you don't have that hour because you gotta be out by 11. Every session that we've had for years has been at least two hours. And if you're gonna look at the schedule, the sessions that are set up now absolutely don't meet with one hour. There's not a single session set up for one hour. It's either three hours, four hours, adult swim, lap swim, um, um, whatever other programs have. Everything is like three to four hours. And trust me, those hours, the pool is pretty much not used. Now, why in the world can they allocate the hours a little to the people that want to use it. We cannot use it, all women swim, want to swim, all women. And we cannot join in public sessions, in co-ed sessions. Therefore, at least the pool is anyway empty. Please have the Parks Department realize that there is pool hours available and they should give it to us women. It does not have to be exactly every day at the same time. Preferably 9 to 11 is a very good hour, but we need it for on Sunday for the young girls that they're off from school and they need the exercise and they want to join. Now there's an issue about vaccinating. Most of these people have had COVID and have, um, what's it called um, when you have the, the, the what's it called antibodies. Um, when they have um, antibodies? And most of them have antibodies. Maybe you can help us get the city to accept doctors' letters of antibodies of people that have had the COVID so that they should be able to use the pool as well. Yes, I am vaccinated. My family did vaccinate, but many are afraid to, especially young, younger people than I am. And everybody has to understand that they have antibodies. What does these shots do? Do they protect you completely from getting COVID? No. My mother was vaccinated. She had both vaccines. And honey, she got honey, 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 honey. Yeah. That's, that, that's not the issue. We're talking about the, the hours. No, no, no. I have two issues here. I want you to understand I'm bringing up two issues. One issue is that we need more hours at the pool. And why people cannot uh, fill up the, the pool is not being as busy as it used to be, is because many, many, many women are afraid to vaccinate. Not only in the Orthodox community. Out there, I'm sure you're aware, in the general public, people don't want to vaccinate. I'm not for it, I'm not against it. I vaccinate, my family's vaccinated. We, you know, I'm not talking for it or against it, but let us respect people's feelings about COVID. They've had COVID, they have antibodies, they can bring letters from their doctors. Please open a slot for people that have gone through COVID and are you know, have antibodies and are able to join the pool. So therefore, many people are just staying away. So it's two issues. Do you get it, Marie? Hello? You know what, Ryan has a question. Honey, Ryan has her hand up. Okay. I, May I hear her question? I, I just I just wanted to, to weigh in on the other side. My partner is not vaccinated. I am vaccinated and I just wanna say that the the there is no ventilation at the pool there's no social distancing and i feel like it's out of our purview to start a discussion about bringing unvaccinated people in into that space but i also am just going to guess that 99.9% .9 people aren't aren't with that and maybe vaccination status at parks should be tabled to another month when there's not 8 minutes left to discuss cuz it seems like a giant big divisive issue, but I come from a household that's half vaccinated, half not vaccinated. I respect people who don't get vaccinations. I love people that get vaccinations. I'm, I'm both things, but I just feel like this same space, here feel yeah. the same way, but I think that both should be respected and 
being that they many, especially the people that are that uh, had COVID. Let's talk about the people that had COVID. They should be uh, this, should, this issue should be discussed. They had COVID and they had antibodies, and they can bring uh, letters from the doctor. No, I don't think this is an issue for the Parks Committee. No, but it, it, this is, I told you there are two issues here. Right. One you, you, more hours, and one will we need we, much more hours, more hours, and again, more hours, and the women somehow will start coming. There are plenty of women in the community that are vaccinated. True. That can only come on certain given times, and they can't come exactly on the Monday or the Wednesday. They should have a chance to be able to come on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right, so Thursday. looking to expand. And Janet, and the, and one, the hour, one hour equals to almost to nothing. One hour doesn't mean anything. Right. There's absolutely no other session on the calendar for one hour. Mary, are you now to only one day? Too? There's only one day Wednesday that we have two hours. Monday well, is one hour, so that does make sense. So, Annie and Bella, too long. No. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. You have an issue. I'm saying don't go on and on. You're wasting your energy. Okay. People cannot deal with the policies around COVID at, uh, at a community meeting. But the fact is, they can deal with that. Now you're, you're being told different hours at different times that the pool is underused. This committee has to deal with the fact that the metropolitan pool is being systematically destroyed because probably they want to close it down and not pay the money for a pool. But that seems to be the only thing that we can come up with because it's been reduced and reduced and reduced over the last few years and nothing is done to bring in or reach uh, the hours and the use of the pool in a way that people want to use and the women are the biggest group using the pool. True. So that's all we want you to know and we'll bring back a report with recommendations next time because it's too much. Yeah, but this is how hard it the, is. You we have can put it on the, the agenda for the next parks committee, committee meeting. I, and, I think that would be very good. And the fact is, is that we'll come in with resolutions, clear ones, and maybe the detailed report, but not so long, you know, because and not at the end of the night. Dealing now with not at the end of the night, and not when you have two people that have been sitting there with uh, trying to. Get their voice in. Well, Jen, they were uh, not we agenda. Looking. We had we had agenda items that. No, no, no. You didn't do anything. You did not do anything. We did come in at the last minute, and I told them, but we're going to have a meeting tomorrow night. We'll bring it up again, and we'll bring it forth to the community board because politically, everybody that's now in office has had the position, at least at some time or other, supporting women's swim, and we want to have it back for all women, not just for. Uh, or, uh, Muslim okay, and Charlene, do you have your women, hand up? but all women. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm a local resident. So I'm speaking on just, I'm a member of the public. My name is Charlene. Um, I will be really short. I understand everybody put their kids to bed. Mine are too. <laughs> um, so I live um, near my Karen playground on the Angered Avenue, and I would like to um, bring up a space that I believe has been mentioned at the very beginning of, uh, of the meeting that is widely underutilized, which is the athletic fields just south of the tennis courts in McCarran. Um, I walk by this space almost every day and I rarely see anyone there. I think most people just use it to cross between um, Barry and Bedford. Um, some folks let their dog run there in the morning, but by and large, compared to the park right across the street, this is widely unutilized, which is somewhat incredible considering that the neighborhood is growing at a really fast pace. This is the asphalt field you're talking about. Yes. Um, I know this used to be used for sports, but since the athletic field was well renovated and reopened in 19, it doesn't look like the space is really used anymore for sports. Also, the recreation center at McCarran uh, reopened this fall, so I'm not sure what's the use of this 
space altogether. There used to be concerts and movies there too, but it looks like this stopped many years ago, or at least two, three years ago, way before the pandemic. Um, most areas in McCarran were renovated over the last decade or so, and there is ongoing construction within the um, Bushwick Inlet, right, for a park. So all of this is great and welcome, all of this renovation. However, I feel like this is a really large space that could be connecting the waterfront, the open street is there, and McCarran Park, and right now it's just, as you all know, just an empty asphalt lot. <laughs> um, and then the main problem that I see um, with the whole lot is that because it's fully covered in dark asphalt, which is really unfit for the current environmental situation we're in. So there's two main problems in my opinion, but you all are have much more expertise than me in this area. But first, when it rains, the water just accumulates there. In fact, I have pictures from just yesterday that was just a small rain and it was still a lot of water accumulated on the eastern side of the slot. Um, and um, we had a lot of um, issue when the hurricane Ida hit the city in September. The whole area was flooded. Neighboring streets had a lot of damages um, in the um, businesses and also in the local, um, the local families were impacted. Um, so whenever we get um, heavy rainfall leading to um, CSO, I believe they drain right to the Bushwick Inlet um, a few blocks up um, and where the new park is being constructed. So that significantly polluted the waterways, as you all know. And it feels like as a community, we are getting hit twice, once by the flooding and two um, by the CSO that are also polluting. Um, the second problem that I see is that the space gets really hot in the summer when I'm walking with my kids, because I'm going between my Karen and Bushwick Inlet Park, like many other people through the open street. Um, I actually really avoid this space because it's almost impossible to cross this space in the middle of the day. And as we know, the um, asphalt reflects heat. So it, it feels sort of absurd to have this large paved area right here. Um, I'm wrapping up, um, thank you for your attention, but all in all, it doesn't look like this space is really well used today for the needs of our community and for the state of the climate that we're in. Um, so I want to raise the fact that I'm really concerned. Trini, you have five is... minutes. If Charlene could send an email outlining all her points. I'm wrapping up to the committee. I'm Actually, Mary, do you want to comment as the, as the asphalt section in McCarran Park ever, if they, has the parks considered changing that or, and upgrading that the way they've upgraded other parts of McCarran? Yes. yes, and um, what I would that, like to see is that I so, would like to see a green space that is helping with stormwater management. So we've asked for funding for this location. Um, and Charlie, just for your information, um, the Parks Department doesn't have a capital budget. We have to request specific project related funding from our elected officials. Um, so um, I would suggest, you know, we will continue to ask for funding for this. But I would suggest advocating uh, with the new council member coming in, Lincoln Ressler, for funding uh, to redo the, we call it an MPPA, a multi-purpose play area, but it's the asphalt field that's covered in the fence. Um, we can ask the new borough president coming in, Antonio Reynoso also, for funding to help us to renovate this. Um, when we do receive funding, we will have a scoping meeting which is where we call upon the public to give the parks department the public's idea of what would work here and what they would what they would like to see, what the public would use. So there's an opportunity for you, your neighbors, and other park goers to come and tell the parks department exactly what um, you would like to see built in this space. So if it's green, then you tell us it's green. The MPPA area in McCarran Park. That's how Oh, yeah, it's the MPPA. You could call it the asphalt field too. It's just the parks term is multi-purpose play area. 
MPPA. Um, but we'll, I also, we'll all know when you say asphalt field, we'll all know exactly what you're talking about. Um, I'd also like to add that this would have been great to discuss um, as a committee leading up to the district needs statement. Um, I, I had um, requested that the committee review the district needs statement before it was approved um, and that uh, request was denied, which was interesting. And so uh, I don't know if it's appropriate because I don't know I'm new, um, but I would love to have a motion to require that this committee, considering the bulk of parks projects in the district needs statement, that this committee agrees to review that statement before it is presented to the community board in the future. Um, you know, I know we missed this year, but coming up in the future, I don't know if that's a motion I can make, but I think yeah, it's... I, th I think this is a lot of points that were raised with the parks was was um, continued on with in the following year because we asked for funding for projects that we didn't get yet. So you need to look at that, and if there's new proposals. Um, they can probably go in next year, but whatever we do have did cover a lot of these points. But Katie, maybe we could put on the agenda earlier than right before the district needs comes up for next year, and maybe even the next park meeting to really review and look at the district needs statement that has been kind of ongoing, has been rolled year after year, and really give it a good. Yeah, it is an ongoing pro process, and there's also uh, probably comments that have to be made to the city coming up up and through March that things can be forwarded over. So oh, great, because it's a perfect project to include in the district needs statement. I, I yeah, think I mean, I, we'd have to ask I, parks, but it would I, be helpful I, I would if the capital budget committee published a schedule from when they need input from the board and from the committees so we could better prepare and do that. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I think they kind of squished everything into like one month, not not on our part, but by the city's part. So, um, you know, they did the consultations in September, went into October, and we really didn't have that much time. But, um, yes, that's, that's uh, something that could be an ongoing process. Maybe agenda items for our next meeting, which I'll talk to Phil and we'll try to get it sooner than later, would be to review the district needs um, list and also women swim and whatever else we come up with. But those would be agenda items. Trina, so I could just suggest too Phil concerning also that committed to doing a bi monthly meeting, as far as I understand, that's automatic on certain dates. So, is that something we can the, let me the talk to Phil and tell him that that was suggested? I think it would be great. And I think he committed. No, he told me in December. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. He told me in November, October when uh, well, maybe that we can get a January date. to do bi, bi monthly meetings beginning in January. Yeah, I think we, I think we have to go, and I think Mary wanted to say something. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. So, just in terms of the the capital needs, July first is the start of the city fiscal year. So, July first is when all the funding that was allocated by the borough president, the mayor, and the council members um, makes its way into the parks budget. I know that the the community board is off in the summer, but September might be a good time to start a conversation about community needs. Just to get ahead of the game, or um, if you know if the community board wants, um, you could start a discussion even over email in the summer when the funding comes out. Thanks, Mary. Mary, I'm sorry, just ten seconds. When you said that the parks had requested um, the has asked for funding for that space, and I, thank you, Charlene, because that's a space I think about a lot too over there. Um, it is wh what is the is I probably you don't I don't know like is there like a timeline for that generally is like parks has requested funding is just like on a list of spaces that the parks wants to work on or or how does that work exactly so what we you know when we speak to the council member we we like to talk to them about projects that 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 have potential um and that's just one of the projects that was on the list to talk about right there okay. are I mean you know uh. Steve Levin and Tony Reynoso, they've funded a lot of projects. If you, um, and Kevin, I don't know if you received this, but I send to the board every month a list of projects that are currently either, um, that are currently funded, that are in various stages of the capital process. And sure. our, our 
our community board has a lot of these projects. So we have a wealth of projects that that have been funded and that are moving through the capital process. But um, you know, this is just one. It's it's a large project, um, and yeah. uh, but you know, greening it 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 sounds like it's something that the community wants. So I would suggest reaching out to your elected officials. Oh, and Mary, I would love to see that. I don't get that. I don't get that email. I would love to see that list. I, I'll it's, email you. It's in our minutes me, every month when we get it. So Thanks. it was, she sends it to us for the report at the board meeting and she discusses it at the meeting and uh, that's where you'll find it. Kevin, email me or give me a call. Thanks. Okay. Go ahead, everybody. Oh, wait. Okay. No, go ahead. Yeah, just real quickly, Charlene, what you brought up about how that particular space and parks in general can act as an environmental, um, you know, mitig mitigating, you know, uh, mechanism is really great. I attended a, a, a webinar with DEP today addressing exactly that issue, and they're partnering with Co the city of Copenhagen where they're utilizing open spaces, green spaces as a way to um, deal with stormwater runoff so they don't go in the CSOs because they have the same problem we do. They can't build much infrastructure underneath the streets to handle that. And there were some amazing examples of how they do that. And one's in Queens where they rebuilt a basketball court that has you know, steps that are bleachers, but actually during a, a major cloudburst storm, it'll actually hold water and then it will recede and then so. Um, so it's, you know, something to be discussed, you know, to contemplate, you know, in the future. So. Thank you. No, thanks. We're ready to go. I think we are. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thanks, Charlene. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you.